If you're watching this show, you are a performance junkie. To you, speed is not just a channel, it's a way of life. Tonight, we're prowling the streets of San Diego, California in the brand new Pontiac GTO. It's the first GTO to roll off the assembly line in 30 years, and we've assembled a bunch of people who can't wait to get their hands on it, including Road and Track's Andy Bornhop and professional race car driver Terry Borchiller. And in a special treat, the first time ever on Speed Channel, the motorsports craze that has just hit from Japan, drifting. And more specifically, Pontiac's GTO drift car driven by Reese Millen. But before they get a crack at it, I'm going cruising. I'll tell you, it feels good to be out cruising in a fun car. It takes me back to uh, the high school days when I used to tell my buddies, I don't care where we go on Friday and Saturday night as long as I'm driving. Didn't do any good if you didn't have a cool car, but this car would have been uh, very welcome. Now, when you're cruising at night, obviously the exterior styling is important. This is, really is a pared down, simple, muscular, clean style. And I think that's gonna be the new design language for Pontiac. Not a lot of extraneous scoops and flaps. And I really like the exterior. My one gripe is, in this day and age, on a performance car, the 17-inch wheels look positively puny, but you can fix that aftermarket-wise. Now, one area where they obviously put a lot of thought to and nailed it is the interior. Visually, it looks really cool. The gauges are nice, color-coded uh, dials, but the thing that grabs me, literally and figuratively, are the seats. Really impressive from a lateral standpoint. I mean, really beefy side bolsters, and uh, ergonomics are great. The steering wheel is telescoping and tilting so a tall guy can get it out back close to him. Everything's right where it's supposed to be. Now, as much as I could listen to the sound all the time and not even need a radio, most of our better halves aren't that way, so uh, they've addressed that in a pretty slick way. It used to be Blaupunk was exclusive territory of Mercedes and Porsche. This has a Blaupunk 200-watt system, 10-speaker, and also another nice feature of the stereo system, it has a six-CD in-dash changer. Other than the Corvette, GM has not made a independent rear suspension muscle car to my knowledge. They stuck with the solid axle for a long time because it was cheap, but it really was limited in what you could do tuning the suspension. And that's, I think, a big reason why this car is such a leap forward over the Firebird. Well, muscle car started out stoplight to stoplight. Let's see how this one does. Hey, you never get tired of that. The heart of a muscle car is the muscle. Uh, this car has got that legendary LS1 V8. And just when they write the V8 off saying, well, it can't compete with the new four valves and this, that, and the other, uh, they reinvent it, and this one is magnificent. Well, we're going to put this engine to the test with race car driver Terry Borchiller at California Speedway when the Speed Channel test drive returns. <laughs> Gray duct tape gets in the way of great looking repairs. So try Scotch Transparent duct tape. This duct tape been holds so powerfully, almost invisibly. Scotch Transparent duct tape from 3M. For all John Deere owners, there's a moment. It happens before the exclusive edge cutting system delivers its first superior cut, before you've put its legendary durability to the test, long before you benefit from the at home support of a dedicated dealer. It's the moment. Faded blue touches bright yellow for the first time. Visit your John Deere retailer today and experience the moment for as little as $14.99. And now for a limited time, get a free cover with purchase of any 100 series tractor. extreme measures to measure space? Introducing the new Straight Line Laser Tape. Just aim, shoot, and measure, and you'll instantly know the size of any job. Laser Tape, part of the Straight Line Laser Tool family. 
If you have great credit, shouldn't you be treated like you do? At eLoan, you are. With cash out refinancing from eLoan, we process your loan differently. From application to instant decision to appraisal, we do it online. That costs less, so you get a great rate. With no lender or appraisal fees, you get your cash out fast in as few as 12 days. You've worked hard for your great credit. The difference is, at eLoan, you're rewarded for it. Apply at eLoan.com slash express or call 866-ELOAN-17. Welcome back to the Speed Channel Test Drive. If you're an enthusiast, you do not want to miss the on-track portion of this show because we're going to do things we've never done on Test Drive. We're going to take this GTO road racing. We've done that before. We're going to go drag racing. We've done that. But drifting, the new craze that's come from Japan that's just hit these shores, basically a power sliding ballet, we're also going to do that in the GTO. Another special treat, which I'm very excited about, is one of my very favorite race car guys, Terry Borchler. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Tommy. Now, you collect championships like most people collect watches. You've only been racing for uh, about seven or eight years, and I think you have six championships already. Take us through those. We've won uh, two in the same year in 1998, and uh, one of the bigger ones was the 2001 LMS championship going against the factory Corvettes. And then last year with the inaugural Daytona Prototype Championship, that was a big one too. Now let's talk a little bit about that win at Daytona this year. You've won Daytona before, but this is your first overall win. Uh, it's hard to win any 24-hour race, but this year, I mean, with even an hour to go, it didn't look like you were gonna win it. Those Winston Cup guys, Dale Jr. and Stewart, were out front and looked uh, infallible, but it's not over till it's over, is it? Yeah, that was our motto. It was a special win for us. Now I'd be very surprised if Pontiac's ever won that race. They must have been excited. Oh, they were. They were ecstatic. As a matter of fact, after the race, they took the manufacturer's trophy, and we've not seen it since. <laughs> On to the GTO. What do you know about this car? I don't know a whole lot about it, really. Uh, today's the first time that I've seen it, but I really like the style, and I like the ergonomic layout. It's simple, but yet it's interesting. Yeah, it really has a good, a good look to it. Now, as much as you drive, I know you never get tired of it, so what do you say we take these beasts out? Sounds great. Here you go. <laughs> Did you ever imagine when you were you know, a kid hot riding around in high school that you know, it used to be four on the floor? Six on the floor doesn't have the, quite the same ring, but it's nice to have six speeds, isn't it? Yeah, it is, especially out here at the Speedway when you can exploit that sixth gear. It makes it fun. Pontiac's very proud of the, how close the car is performance-wise from the six-speed to the automatic. Both of them, uh, especially the automatic, I guess, where it's most impressive, they really did a lot of work on the shift profiles, and uh, a lot of it's in the software that controls the, the shift mechanism and to get within a tenth zero to 60 and a tenth in the quarter mile uh, is a pretty uh, significant accomplishment for an automatic. All right, buddy boy, here we are. We're singing through the NASCAR one and two at California Speedway doing about a buck 20. I'm gonna see how the brakes are on this hot rod. We got a good corner coming up for it. This is a really tight left hander. I got a nice little run on you. I'm sliding down the inside now. Whoa, it stops pretty well, but there's a decent amount of fade. If I gotta say, I mean, that's gotta be the weak link on the car. I mean, I like just about everything else about it, but the brakes are definitely a little bit dodgy. Tell you what, as much as I like this fancy three-channel Bosch traction control, what do you say we switch it off? That sounds great. Let's have some fun. <laughs> You're looking good from back here, buddy. It might be this part of the show where people accuse me of having the best job on earth. What do you think? Yeah, I'd have to agree. Somebody's got to do it. That's the way I look at it. You know, I just. Take my lunch pail to work and grind it out. Let's see what you got, Hot Rod? Give me room, buddy. Ride him, cowboy! Oh, that was fun to watch. Look at that. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, baby. Talk to me about the balance as you head into the infield. 
The balance on this car is great. It, it, from the straight line braking, even to the turning, you don't have a whole lot of understeer, which normally for a street car you got quite a bit. You can manage it real good with the uh, with the throttle of the brakes. I think that's because of the independent suspension and also the uh, the weight distribution. Uh, it's hard to get 50-50, and this car is not quite 50-50, but it's probably as close as you're going to see. It's 55 front, 45% rear, and that goes a long ways towards explaining why the balance is so nice, I think. How about the sound of this car? You like it? I do. I like it a lot. It's got a, uh, got a real throaty sound to it. This is a genuine dual exhaust from the headers all the way back to the tailpipe dual exhaust a lot of people have two pipes sticking out the back but they're not true dual exhaust and so you know here i think it was natural i don't think they had to work that hard to make it sound this way a lot of people are spending a lot of time making cars sound how they want this one i think they just said you know what we put two big pipes going all the way to the back it'll take care of itself yeah i, I think they've done a real good job it's the sound is real appealing and also you know the power is is impressive. I don't know what the zero to 60 numbers are, but I'm, I would imagine they're pretty good. Your car is 5.3 zero to 60. This one's just a tick slower at 5.4. 13.8 in the quarter for this one, 13.7 for that one. And that's that good old, you know, uh, General Motors horsepower, that same V8 that's in the Corvette, been kind of tuned for the GTO, but it's, uh, it's got definitely good DNA, this GTO does. I'll tell you what, Terry, that was an absolute gas. But uh, the heritage of the GTO is on the, the drag strip. Why don't we head on over to the drag strip, and the winner over the drag strip is going to get to mix it up with Reese Millen in that GTO drift car. What do you say? Sounds great. Terry, what I didn't tell you when I said we were going to drag race to see who got to go with Reese Millen in the drifting GTO was that you have to drive a car that's about 40 years old. Yeah, I think I've been framed. Well, you know, the host of the show, I got certain certain rights, but you're used to being the underdog, right? I'm used to it. Been that way my whole career. Looks like I got you there, buddy. Not bad for an old dog, huh? You think that's all I got? <laughs> 40 years, technology, hard to overcome, brother. Well, Terry, as nice as a guy as you are, I gotta put you on the trailer, brother. You got races to win. Thanks for joining us. I'm gonna go do some drifting. Thanks for a great time, TK. We'll be right back with the Drifting GTO when Speed Channel Test Drive continues. Garden Claw, one of America's favorite garden tools, is good as gold. It adjusts to fit gardeners of all sizes. Garden Claw Gold helps you cultivate, loosen, aerate, and weed without being tough on your back. The Claw's steel tines tear through all kinds of soil, even clay, bringing moisture and oxygen to plants' roots. And it turns weeds and leaves into beneficial mulch. Garden Claw Gold makes a great gift. At Home Depot, Kmart, Sears Hardware, Lowe's, and participating Ace True Value and Do It Best Hardware stores. F1 Sunday, exclusively on Speed, the Spanish Grand Prix. Schumacher's dominated the season, but Jensen Button is closing the gap and hungry for his first win. And here we go, guys. The Spanish GP live from Barcelona, Sunday morning, only on Speed. For over 30 years, Styx has made music that defined a generation. Come sail away, the Styx Anthology. Come sail away. For the first time ever, a remarkable 30-year career retrospective features all of Styx's classic hits, including Come Sail Away and Too Much Time on My Hands. Too much time on my hands. Collar Man, well, I'm gonna Renegade, I'm gonna from and many more huge hits from one of the most popular and beloved bands of its generation. Come Sail Away, the Sticks Anthology also features Mr. Roboto and many more. Digitally remastered tracks on two unforgettable CDs. To order, call the number on your screen or send $19.98 for two CDs plus $4.95 shipping and handling to the address shown. Call now for rush delivery. Welcome back to the Speed Channel Test Drive. We promised you something new in the on-track segment, and that something new is nothing less than the biggest motorsports craze to hit these shores in some time. This one's straight from Japan. It's called drifting. For lack of a better description, it's like a power sliding ballet. And one of the first Americans to tackle this form of motorsports, Reese Millen, welcome to the show. Thanks, great to be here. Now, drifting has been around in Japan for a while, but it's just come on with a bang here, and it's got people really fired up. What is it? 
Well, yeah, it's been in Japan for about 10 years. Uh, for 2004, you're going to see the first sanctioned series in the US. Extreme motorsport, I guess you could say. You know, we're looking at cars entering corners 90 mile an hour plus, backing the cars in sideways and flowing it through the corners. Essentially, everything that you would do uh, to go slow on a road course, we're doing to go fast. So you're having to unlearn your good habits and relearn your bad ones? Exactly. Why did you choose the GTO? Um, you know, I looked at the cars that were out there and considered the, the GTO as the perfect platform. And what we've come to find in our short period of time of testing, the car is very impressive. What makes a perfect drift car? Uh, you're looking at rear wheel drive, four to 500 plus horsepower, good steering angles and good balance. And this car has that from the factory. What have you had to do with this GTO to get it competitive? Uh, you know, this car is, is plus probably 70 horsepower over the factory car, uh, about 900 pounds lighter. Um, maybe the, the biggest key element that we did it is on the chassis. We changed the steering angle, increased it about 15 degrees. So it really enables you to control the car at those greater slip angles um, and really hustle the car through the corners. So just about the time I'm out a lot going off the road backwards, that's right where you want to be. Yeah, definitely. That's probably where I'm putting in more throttle just to control it. Finally, the perfect motorsport. Uh, definitely. It, it is just amazing. Most incredible feeling as a driver and especially from what the fans appeal is, it's incredible. Well, let's get after it. All righty. I'll tell you what, Reese. Uh, this is <laughs> look at that. Well, this is the uh, the U.S. television debut of drifting, as far as I know, on Speed Channel. And this is why <laughs> it is so popular. Look at that. How to turn dollars into smoke. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of fun. Now explain to everybody exactly what drifting is. I mean, it's a power slide, but how is it judged? Uh, it's judged subjectively. You know, you're based on your approach angle, your speed to the corner, how much slip angle, as you can see there, and how finesse and controlled you can be as well. Well, now, Reese, what is it that makes a good drifting car? Uh, well, you know, good balance. As you can see, you come into the corner, lots of torque on this car. You can just fire it in. Hold it out there, good steering angle. You can see how sideways you can get. And still be under control. <laughs> I've never seen someone treat a straightaway quite like that. <laughs> you know, you gotta add a little bit of mileage there where it's not, where it's not there. <laughs> <laughs> now, Reese, why do you think drifting has caught on with the fire that it has? Uh, well, you're in the perfect position to um, sit back and watch. Check this out. <laughs> that was awesome. Even the straightaways are woohoo! They're a lot of fun. <laughs> I know these, these road race guys have had um, rain on one side of the track and sunshine on the other, but I don't think they've had fog. <laughs> yeah, it's clear. Uh, we got fog in corner one. <laughs> got a bit of a haze that has just shown up in turn one. <laughs> Now, Reese, what have you had to do to this GTO to get ready to drift professionally? Uh, you know, obviously we increased the horsepower quite a lot. Um, and then the steering gear, you can see the car has so much control. And you can get it so sideways, but still be in control. Well, that makes one of us, because <laughs> I spun out. Where are you at? <laughs>
I spun out in the first corner. <laughs> I was trying to be like Reese for a little while there, but I ran out of uh, hands and elbows. And harder than it looks. I knew that before I did it, but that proved it. <laughs> that was sweet. Sweet, buddy. You're right there. You're right there. I'll tell you what, that thing is a sexy beast. <laughs> Looks pretty good, doesn't it? <laughs> well, for someone who's been following drifting for a couple years now, it's a pleasure to be able to do this segment. Thanks for joining us, Reese. Uh, pleasure's all mine. Thanks very much, Tony. We are not done yet, though, on the Speed Channel test drive, so stay tuned. Oh, that is so bitchy. My name is Jim Lucier. I'm assigned to the 10th Special Forces Group at Fort Carson, Colorado. In my job, you have to be prepared for anything, so I train for everything. Every day is a little different. You push your limits far enough, you find out you don't have any. It's been in Hoffman by the U.S. Army. And there's one more thing that the Army trained me to do. The doctor will see you now. Get more of Jim's story only at GoArmy.com. Speed Monday. We crash bigger when we get going faster. Inside Nextel Cup. Got that going for me. And we need to get a leader. He's been working all year long without a crew chief. NBS 24-7. Monday, 7 Eastern, 8 Pacific, only on Speed. Deck and patio owners, have you ever been frustrated by the weather on your deck or patio? Struggling with the blazing hot midday sun or those unpredictable summer showers? At last, there's a solution that lets you outsmart the weather. It's the easy-to-use and affordable Sunsetter retractable awning. And right now, you can get the whole Sunsetter story in this free catalog and video. Inside, you'll discover how the easy-to-use Sunsetter opens in less than 30 seconds to create a comfortable shaded retreat on sunny days or an instant outdoor shelter when sudden showers strike. All at factory direct prices that will save you hundreds of dollars. So, isn't it time you started enjoying your outdoors more? Rain or shine? Call for your free Sunsetter catalog and video today. Call 1-800-548-9955 to receive your free video and catalog on the Sunsetter retractable awning. Call 1-800-548-9955. Welcome back to the Speed Channel Test Drive. Joining us today to look at the brand new 2004 GXP Grand Prix Comp G and exciting GTO is road and track critic Andy Bornhop. Andy, welcome to the show. Good to be here, Tommy. How you doing? I'm doing great. Now these three cars are what you might call the Pontiac Performance Trifecta. I know you've driven the GTO, you haven't driven the other two, but how do these two fit in? As far as the, the, the GXP is concerned, it's, uh, it's a Bonneville, but you wouldn't know it. They've done a good job of making a, a sports sedan with the right look. You know, big brakes, sports suspension, 18-inch wheels and tires. For a large sedan, it's pretty handsome. And as far as the Comp G is concerned, it's it's the ultimate uh, Grand Prix GTP. It's a, I think it's about a $2,000 option, and it's basically a, a suspension package and a uh, paddle shifter package. And one other thing it has is uh, it has a... Uh, a more efficient blower that last year this engine basically put out 240 horsepower this year it puts out 255 and so it's got even more power than before and the 3800 the v6 is a good engine it's a good blend of economy and torque it's one of my favorites well now let's go to the gto the heart of the show uh, a lot of people have been excited about this car you spend quite a bit of time in it tell us your thoughts about it it's a true gt and by that's a grand touring car a car that you could could uh, drive long distance comfortably but when the road starts to twist have a lot of fun because there's there's all the right ingredients. Now, people think V8, but this is a new, pretty impressive V8, is it not? You know, there are people that, that criticize pushrod V8s as being old school technology. I'd like to put forth the notion that maybe they haven't driven one lately. You know, it, it's a great engine. Now, I know you've spent quite a bit of time in the GTO, but we're anxious to get your thoughts while you're behind the wheel cruising around here in beautiful San Diego, around the bay and the marina. So let's get to it. Let's do it, Tommy. The GTO is, is a car that we all remember from the 60s. It kind of established the word muscle car. And uh, although the D GTO is discontinued many years ago, and this new GTO doesn't really have any stylistic links to that car, uh, performance-wise, this car definitely lives up to the GTO name. I'd have to say I'm very impressed with the interior. 
It's unlike uh, GM's North American interiors. It's handsome, it's well built, the materials they use are really good. I think the level of quality in the design is really nice. An interesting twist with this car is that GM has had to turn to their Australian division, Holden, to get a new muscle car. When Bob Lutch, GM's product czar, uh, saw the car down in Australia, he knew that there was a basis for a good new Pontiac GTL. And I'm really glad he did, because this car is a blast. One of the interesting ways you can tell that this car is built in Australia is to look down at the stereo. If you look closely, you'll see that the switch, the main volume control and power switch is on the right-hand side, which is on the passenger side. In the U.S. market, most radio setups where the switch is on the left-hand side. So you can impress your friends with that little tidbit of knowledge. Although the GTO is sprung in such a way that the ride is very comfortable and be a great car to go cross-country in, on a twisty road, it doesn't embarrass itself. It actually works really well. Uh, the grip from the tires could be a little bit better, but in general, the, the ride motions are well controlled. There's not too much body roll. The car has very good steering feel, and uh, when you exit the corners, especially with the traction control off, you can kind of use the throttle to help steer the car, which is great rear drive fun. At $34,000, the GTO is by no means inexpensive, but at the same time, it's great bang for the buck. You know, what other car can do 0 to 60 miles per hour in 5.3 seconds and shoot through the quarter mile at 13.8 at 104 miles per hour? I mean, that, that's pretty impressive. Andy may be impressed, but for the final word on the Pontiac GTO, keep your eyes on the prize, because the Speed Channel test drive will be right back. Things are happening now in your Kawasaki dealer. On every leading edge Kawasaki product, get zero down financing with an incredible low APR and great low payments. You can ride a new Kawasaki for as little as $39 a month on 2003 and prior year models, or as low as $49 a month on 2004 models. Call or visit Kawasaki.com and enter to win during Kawasaki's Great Gear Giveaway. Thousands of gear will be given away with prizes awarded daily. But you have to call and go online now for your chance to win. It's a great time to buy a Kawasaki. And a great time to win Kawasaki gear. Call and go online now to enter the great gear giveaway and find your participating Kawasaki dealer offering great finance deals. But don't wait, because all great things must come to an end. If these walls could talk, They'd say use the straight line laser level. Just level, set, fire, and get everything laser straight. Laser level, part of the straight line laser tool family. Red Bull is searching for one American driver to become the next Formula One world champion. Are you the one? Welcome back to the Speed Channel test drive of the 2004 Pontiac GTO. GTO stands for Gran Turismo Homologato, and as the name implies, the early GTOs were basically homologation specials, the practice used by the car companies of selling hot rod production cars to tip the scales their way on the racetrack, in effect kicking off the muscle car era. As the first new GTO to hit the streets in some three decades, this new GOAT had a whole lot to live up to. But with its V8 power, 350 horses, and luxurious sophistication, the 2004 GTO surpasses some very high expectations. The 2004 GTO, the American muscle car, is all grown up. I'm Tommy Kendall. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. Ah!